Hey guys, Stock Saturday, and after a fairly rough week last week, uh, come back with a big green. Uh, everything sort of seems to have uh, sort of risen across the board this week. Uh, you've had sort of inflation news, uh, the dollar coming down, and just basically uh, risk assets uh, seem to have come up. Um, so I've got things like uh, Stellantis back over $20. Uh, the Emerging Markets ETF has almost gone positive. Uh, not entirely sure what to do with that if I would sell it though because uh, everything is up uh, Process doing quite well TSMC sort of knocking on a hundred dollars Broadcom knocking on a thousand dollars potentially uh, do you sort of wonder uh, some people are suggesting taking profits uh, I'm not quite so sure I'll uh, have a bit of look into the future um, Hi-Max doing really well six dollars thirteen now um, so yeah across the board really and the gold and silver doing pretty well uh, I didn't cover uh, Equinox Gold one of my uh, other large positions uh, released their Q3 earnings and it's sort of similar to uh, Kua Mining really they're sort of expanding so uh, still showing a, a very low net income uh, but they produced 149,000 ounces of gold which is very good uh, it's what sort of uh, a lot of miners uh, much larger market cap than Equinox do um, and yeah uh, all in sustaining cost of $1630 which is high uh, but hoping that sort of comes down with the expansion um, net income 25 million uh, and or income from mine operations 25 million and a net profit of 2.2 uh, after the um, extensive capex required um, one cent per share and and sort of adjusted you know they remove uh, a few of those bits 28 million basically this is all sort of going to get better uh, from q3 next year as the uh, expansion goes live and they've been doing some credit bits and pieces so they drew uh, 127 million of the revolving credit facility uh, but then issued some unsecured um, convertible notes. So these are sort of debt uh, until um, the people buying them actually want to convert. Uh, they don't have to convert, I guess, but uh, most likely they will, especially if uh, gold is doing well. So, yeah, that's sort of 172 million's worth of dilution, potentially. That sort of uh, held, the, uh, held the stock back, really, compared to... Uh, some other gold and silver stocks um, but they also then uh, in October uh, repaid a load of the revolving credit facility uh, with that cash so yeah bit of uh, credit sort of ups and downs um, convertible notes have 4.75 percent interest which is pretty good so I guess in that sort of lower because they are able to be uh, converted into shares um, and that's a conversion price of six dollars thirty so they're relatively uh, bullish about the stock um, and yeah gold produced sort of giving you uh, the same numbers uh, all in sustaining cost that's sort of up from uh, last quarter uh, but slightly down from uh, the same quarter last year so yeah it's uh, it's up and down but i'm hoping for that to be sort of better uh, later next year this is really a sort of as i say a mid 2024 onward stock uh, they're still saying uh, first half of next year to start pouring at the uh, expansion 93 percent complete so let's hope so and they sort of hide the uh, the debt side down the bottom here not really a full balance sheet just uh, cash and debt so current debt stayed the same um, long-term debt is up um, up from uh, last quarter but uh, only slightly up from last year so it's been a bit up and down while they're sort of financing the expansion and uh, cash up uh, to 350 million so yeah net debt just sort of slightly up and hopefully should start sort of paying this off uh, from uh, much higher cash flow uh, into later next year I did think this was a really interesting chart just to sort of highlight my uh, bullishness in gold um, and crypto really um, this is the uh, US budget deficit and uh, so full year uh, financial year 2022 uh, theirs was 996 billion dollars which is 
rather a lot um, but they've sort of shown the difference uh, to this year and they're looking at 2.02 trillion dollars and this has sort of largely come from uh, as you can see sort of the uh, yellow bars here are uh, reduced revenue um, so you know expenses were the same but they've had less revenue in so that increases the deficit um, tax receipts are down um, you know auction proceeds from uh, certain debts and things uh, California tax receipts individually um, were down so that's caused them less income and then on the expenses side uh, with interest rates going up the uh, net interest on the debt has gone up this will increase uh, substantially in um, the next financial year because uh, they only raised rates and only some of this was uh, maturing at the higher rates this year so uh, this uh, this pink will get rather a lot bigger and then you just have your constant sort of inflation adjusted uh, social security and uh, medicare and department of defense and that sort of thing another 50 billion on uh, defense and uh, you also had the bank bailouts uh, this year, which you didn't have uh, previous year. Um, wouldn't be surprised if you get a few more of those uh, over the next year with uh, with the higher rates. So, yeah, a lot of these um, a lot of these pink sort of items aren't one off items. They're ones that will carry on um, increasing. So, yeah, you could be looking at sort of continuous uh, deficits, and this means essentially it's not quantitative easing. But it is printing because they're having to issue more debt and that money will eventually make its way into the economy, in my opinion. So it's debasement of the currency and that causes basically all um, hard assets to increase. So that's my thoughts on uh, sort of the bullish case for crypto and gold, really, and silver. So Tencent, always uh, good to see how they're getting on. Uh, remembering I hold uh, Process, not uh, Tencent Direct. Maybe one day we'll, we'll switch, but uh, for now I didn't really see the need to. Um, so revenue uh, doing quite well, 154 million. It's up 4% uh, on last quarter and 10% uh, up on last year. And they sort of break this down uh, quite good on uh, international games, which is always good. Uh, as much as I like the sort of domestic game side, it's uh, they don't really seem a gaming, uh, super gaming friendly country. They play a lot, but uh, government don't particularly like them playing a lot. So international games, I think, is certainly one to push, and they certainly seem to be agreeing with that. Uh, Fintech's uh, online advertising quite uh, done quite well, uh, slightly up on last quarter, but... Much better than last year, not really a surprise, similar with uh, fintech and business. But it's the profit side that has sort of been uh, really increasing. Um, they do have a sort of a similar um, issue to Berkshire Hathaway, really, in that they sort of have a large uh, portfolio of public stocks, I think. And when this, uh, you know, when they go up and down, uh, they report this as profit and loss when really it isn't because... They're not uh, selling sort of most of those companies. They're not a uh, sort of a trading, you know, type hedge fund. They do seem to buy a lot of this stuff for relatively long periods. So it going up or down one quarter doesn't really make a huge difference. But yeah, profits uh, looking pretty good. Um, sort of key services looking extremely good. Uh, I do still think um, the sort of WeChat and uh, the Chinese version. 1.33 billion people uh, mobile devices at uh, 558 million on the, the qq service i think these are more sort of durable and uh, sticky things than um, you know companies like alibaba sort of people are always going to use them but may drop off a little bit um, in harder times whereas uh, from what i understand wechat is essentially people's livelihoods and life so yeah, business and payments and uh, sort of, you know, it's basically sort of half of the apps on your phone all rolled into one. So you're not really going to live without it. Always good to see them sort of branching out on uh, IP as well. Uh, so they have their sort of, you know, own side with things like Valorant and uh, Honor of Kings. Um, but yeah, new IPs sort of come into uh, mobile games, Monster Hunter, you know, so... Uh, Capcom game, uh, Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, so they do sort of 
have their fingers in uh, many pies around sort of uh, developers around the world. Uh, One Piece, they've got the um, the show on Netflix, I believe. So yeah, it's uh, good to see them sort of using the the links with these companies that they sort of buy five percent in, which you don't think is uh, a big deal, but it then sort of gives them ties and uh, opportunity. This was an interesting uh, partnership as well um, with Meta, uh, because Meta's platforms are sort of largely um, banned in China. Um, so sort of partnering up with Tencent, Meta making the uh, the headset or, you know, designing the headset and having it manufactured. And uh, Tencent being the exclusive seller and sort of put a bit of their own uh, software, a bit of their own spin on it and sort of distributing around China could be... Uh, would be very interesting. Um, By Byte, uh, Byte Dance, who own uh, TikTok, bought Pico, um, which is a, a VR headset uh, company, and they've sort of been fairly popular in uh, China, but sort of uh, mixing, you know, a bit of a mixed bag, depending on whether people are feeling flush and want to buy this sort of thing. Um, but they've now got sort of competition, so uh, that's pretty good. Good for uh, Meta, I guess, expanding into into china and good for tencent if they're going to be the exclusive dealer so yeah very nice i did see as well there's no love uh, between bite dance and uh, tencent they're actually uh, looks like they're going to be going to court um, because uh, they develop mobile legends bang bang terrible name i'm sure it's uh, a translation uh, issue but yeah it's they're saying it's very very similar to uh, riot games league of legends which is uh, entirely owned by tencent um so uh, bite dancer actually looking to sell off this studio um val- potentially valued at four billion dollars but of course depending on how this court case goes if their sort of biggest game uh, does run into issues or they have to you know, change it or it potentially gets axed. Um, obviously, that deal is not really going to be uh, as as valuable or sought after. But yeah, you have to say sort of ten cents game came first. They uh, did incredibly well with uh, League of Legends and uh, Riot Games. So we'll see how that uh, court case goes. So just looking at some of the news, there was a fair bit of news this week. Uh, you had the UK. Earnings figures uh, sort of slightly uh, down on uh, last month, but sort of as expected. This is September, so it's a little bit out of date. Um, the uh, excluding the bonus was as expected, and including the bonus was slightly up. So people are getting bonuses that time. Of, well, it's not that time of the year because it's September, but yeah, people get uh, bonuses even in September, I guess. And the um, three-month employment change uh, was sort of much higher than expected. They were expecting minus 198,000 jobs, and it was positive. So, yeah, slightly higher um, unemployment claims for October. But, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit up and down. Uh, then you had US CPI was sort of across the board uh, lower than expected. So headline CPI for October was completely flat. Uh, on the core side, 0.2%, a little bit lower. Um, and uh, the year-on-year figure was 4%, slightly uh, lower than expected. They were sort of projecting um, flat from last month. And uh, headline down from 3.7 to 3.2 instead of 3.3. So uh, I'd still sort of have to... Uh, you know, remind people that uh, every time Jerome Powell uh, mentions inflation, he mentions core PCE, not uh, not even any of these. He prefers uh, personal consumption index, I think it is, or personal consumption uh, expenditure um, index. So, yeah, people sort of say, you know, headline CPI is getting closer to 2%. That isn't what he's measuring. So, yeah, worth bearing that in mind. Um, then you had the UK CPI figures, which again were across the board uh, lower than expected. Um, the again headline um, CPI was flat, uh, was expected to be sort of 0.1% and down from half a percent last month. So that's brought uh, brought the yearly figure down from 6.7 to 4.6. Uh, looks like this was largely um, uh, an energy price. Uh, issue you know food and uh, 
housing costs and things are still going up. Uh, it's worth watching Damien Talks Money's video on this. He sort of breaks uh, a lot of the figures down and shows that it's not quite as true as uh, as what the uh, headline numbers show. Um, but core uh, down from 6.1 to 5.7. So still pretty good. And the most recent figures sort of uh, much lower than, um, you know, 5.7 even annualised. So all good. But then Friday, certainly uh, for the UK at least, we're sort of taking a bit of a hit, it seems. Uh, October retail sales sort of terrible across the board. Uh, they were expecting sort of uh, the year-on-year -year figure to be uh, down similar to last month. And we're down 2.4% on last year. Uh, so not particularly good. Um, retail uh, monthly sales down 0.1%. And sort of headline down 2.7%, um, sort of down in October as well. So, yeah, I guess they were uh, up last year. Last year, people were sort of still spending like uh, like crazy people because they were out of lockdown, I guess. And, uh, yeah, maybe that's sort of coming down a little bit. But overall, as I say, it's uh, done wonders for the portfolio. So um, I'm actually up 5.7% for the week and um, added another sort of £3,000. Uh, this is all actually in uh, interactive brokers. But uh, yeah, I'll sort of I'll come to that in a sec. I really should. I might just change that to uh, a little cash bit on interactive brokers actually rather than put that here. Um, but the gold side um, has been sort of a large contributor to uh, a lot of this. So core mining sort of got down to $2.11. Uh, not entirely sure sort of why it uh, went down quite so low and then uh, rose sort of 15%, I think, on uh, Wednesday or Thursday and it sort of come back to $2.52. So I did um, buy a little bit sort of uh, during the week and sort of last week. So... Yeah, all uh, all looking good, um, and that's yeah up to sort of nearly fifteen thousand pound now. So certainly uh, my largest position. Um, I did what I have done is sold off uh, First Majestic Silver. Um, they sort of rose uh, quite a bit similar to uh, Coor Mining really. They sort of rose quite a bit during the week, and Equinox didn't really uh, go up all that much. And I've sort of been. Uh, disappointed with uh, First Majestic uh, over the last sort of year, really. Their sort of uh, Jarrett Canyon gold mine uh, sort of shut down uh, because it's too expensive to run at the moment. They can't seem to find a way to reduce costs. So, yeah, they're at um, about the same market cap as Equinox Gold now, and they're sort of producing about 350,000 ounces of gold, sort of equivalent. Uh, they like to quote it in silver, but just to sort of compare to Equinox, um, about 350,000 ounces, where Equinox are doing 600,000 ounces now, and sort of uh, pushing, basically pushing towards uh, towards a million, basically. So, yeah, they've got a little bit more debt, but, yeah, to be the same market cap, that just seems crazy. So, finally uh, sold off um, First Majestic and put that into Equinox. Uh, Clean Spark three dollars ninety four. Still waiting for the uh, Q three earnings. Not quite sure why that's so uh, so delayed. Hoping it isn't because it's bad news. But yeah, that's all sort of still bumbling around while uh, Bitcoin is sort of fairly flat. Um, yeah, still got four thousand seven hundred in cash. Uh, not sort of seen too much uh, since everything went up that I wanted to spend that on. And the REITs are sort of doing pretty well. Tritax uh, Euro box up to 52p. That sort of got down to the low 40s. So that's not too bad. Still uh, heavily down because I'm not averaging down on these. Um, yeah, IG trading sort of uh, slightly up across the board. And interactive brokers. Yeah, the uh, Chinese tech has been sort of taking a bit of a knock. Aside from uh, sort of Tencent has been doing... A bit better than the rest, it seems. Uh, I'll have to have a, have a look at Alibaba. They've sort of dropped quite a bit. Uh, not really a huge position for me. But, yeah, I'll have a look at uh, Alibaba and Baidu. Uh, but on the option side, obviously, uh, with Kua Mining coming right back to sort of 250, that's increased the options quite a lot. 
um, I have been, I don't sort of break these down into what they are. I have been selling off a lot of the uh, options that were sort of expiring um, end of next year because I was wanting end of 2025, really. That's my sort of super bullish period. So I've been sort of buying the odd um, option more at um, expiring end of 2025 and sort of selling off um, any ones that were either sort of at a profit or at a very small loss if I can and uh, yeah just focusing on the end of 2025 ones so I've actually uh, sold more than I've bought this week and they've risen overall they're now at just under £10,000 so quite nice uh, I always sort of said I wanted uh, about £10,000 or so in these and yeah but I do still have uh, sort of 4000 in cash um, which I had intended to go into options, but they don't look quite so lucrative now. I might just uh, might just leave them and sort of use the cash for something else. So yeah, leave uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know how you guys are doing, and uh, like and subscribe. See you soon.